Hi everyone, this is a short lecture about three important theorem of a vector integral of a vector field, Green's theorem and Stokes theorem and divergence theorem. So let's begin with uh, reminding ourselves of the three theorem. Green's theorem first is about line integral um, on two-dimensional space xy plane and that changes to double integral. And the Stokes theorem is the line integral but it is a sitting inside three-dimensional space so it's curved around not flat curve but that still becomes um, two-dimensional sort of <coughs> integral called surface integral divergence theorem really takes to a higher dimensional analog of these Green's theorem and Stokes theorem it was a line integral to double integral line integral to surface integral still parametry parameter wise it's still two dimensional two uh, two parameters involved so it's a two dimensional calculation but divergence theorem starts from um, surface integral parametry parameter wise just again two dimensional calculation becomes triple integral that becomes a three dimensional calculation so Green's theorem and Stokes theorem is analogous in terms of where it is sitting, they call it an ambient space, but its intrinsic dimension, how many parameters are involved in here and how many parameters are involved in there in both calculations of integrals, that is the same. There's a line integral here, one parameter um, is involved in that calculation, and um, both of them the right hand side a double integral or surface integral two dimensional so intrinsic intrinsic dimension is the same that's what i wrote here intrinsic dimension of this one dimensional integral transformed into two dimensional integral intrinsically again uh, parameter wise is one dimensional integral changed to two dimensional integral but of course stokes theorem looks more complicated and it seems like a 2d versus 3d but it is simply where it's taking place. This one is taking place entirely in the three-dimensional space, but this one is taking place in three dimension, a uh, two-dimensional space here, excuse me, and the next one is um, taking place in three-dimensional space. But again, so-called intrinsic dimension is the same. In that, there is a similarity. Of course, there's obviously there's similarity there. However, um, how it compared to divergence theorem is a slightly different. So true um, analog of Green's theorem, higher dimension of origin, intrinsically higher dimension of origin will be divergence theorem. So this one takes, this is one dimensional to two dimensional integral intrinsically. This one takes a two dimensional integral that is sitting inside the three dimensional ambient space. That becomes three dimensional, uh, intrinsically three dimensional integrals. And it is all taking place in ambient space. But we can also see this nice connection. So Green's theorem and Stokes theorem is the same kind of thing. But what Green's theorem and Stokes theorem is doing is pushing the line integral to the surface integral. And divergence theorem takes the surface integral to the triple integral. So it's a continuation. So this operator is you know continuously defined if you're if everything is taking place there's a lot higher dimension. You have a vector field to push the next level, so something is called a curl, right? You have a, some vector field and push another level. The next level of operation is called divergence theorem, and so on. So that's how it compares. Next one is Green's theorem versus divergence theorem. That's a right analogy in terms of um, intrinsic dimension is bumped up. Again, Green's theorem and Stokes theorem, intrinsic dimension is not changing. So this is true analogy. So let me remind you of um, the motivation and what is that we are calculating in Green's theorem. If you look at the Green's theorem, it is about dotting to the dr dt. So what is dr dt? Is a tangent vector to the curve, and the force field is there. Force is out there, and we're um, taking the dot product of these uh, force against this. Um, tangent vector so that's kind of amount of how much it moved and stuff like that so dot product again tangent vector it is motivated from the work calculation remember if 
forces apply to that direction if you're moving to that direction how much is forces exerted along that direction of the movement and all that so that was a remote motivated from the work calculation but if you think about the divergence theorem this is supposed to be um, surface and uh, in three-dimensional space and sitting inside uh, three-dimensional space so um, if you think about it, if you go back to this divergence theorem, this divergence theorem is taking the dot product not to any of these tangent vectors. There's no unique tangent vector. There's already a little bit of problem, but there is a unique, kind of unique opposite way. But outward, then it is uniquely determined. It is dotting, taking the dot product toward to um, with this normal vector, right? It was motivated by flux calculation and in my courses I use more natural thing easy to understand number of things this passes through if water is flowing through all that and what is a number of water particle going into this region and going out to the region common sense says of course it'd be zero right in that case is a trivial calculation but you can think of other types of other types of a vector field so even though the intrinsic dimension wise is a perfect analogy you can see they're calculating very different things and if you look at the divergence theorem and the formula here it's no one had to take any effort to remember the divergence theorem but we actually have to practice a little bit called Green's theorem not too bad but Stokes theorem was complicated so that difference why the divergence of F and curl of F look very different you know the curl looks like more twisted around with a plus and minus it is all happening because we're dotting against very different vectors so let's see if we can turn this Green's theorem let's not dot to this tangent vector let's dot to this outward um, normal vector to this curve and are we going to have something similar to that and the answer is yes and that's my next part so here it is this is called a 2D version of Green's theorem and there is this curve uh, surrounding this simply connected region so this vector field we are looking at here must be defined everywhere inside right not just for line integral for line integral we do not need anything inside but to pass to the double integral or surface integral in this case we have to have everything um, defined inside there now let's not dot this one against this tangent vector going that, that direction let's dot it with this outward uh, normal vector and this will be normal as well but to that one it's outward there so I hope you um, agree that in this if you go around look around intuitively you can see this uh, normal vector relationship between normal vector and this direction of a tangent vector is that negative 90 degree rotation or clockwise rotation of a 90 degree and then there is a simple formula you simply swap x and y and put the negative if you think about it in the first quadrant you're putting the negative in the y coordinate if that makes sense so if you do that and if you go through a Green's theorem once again you know integrating you know kind of breaking into the top curve and bottom curve and going through you will see it looks a lot like um, Green's theorem again even in this I mean the divergence theorem even compared to the Green's theorem except the sign and other thing the structure of how we take this line integral and put it into a double integral that uh, calculation a method there is pretty much the same that's pretty much why we're doing this here so here's the part that if you take the line integral um, think about how you're calculating this is a direct uh, parameterization calculation we're not doing x prime y prime that would be this tangent vector but negative 90 degree rotation if you use the matrix this is easy is this swap an x and y coordinates of this tangent vector and put negative negate that y coordinate in there now if you go ahead and calculate you can easily see that calculation is simply px, um, px the double integral over px plus qy which is what you see 
in the divergence theorem except that QZ part. Since we don't have any Z part, that kind of makes sense here as well. So you can see the true analogy of Green's theorem versus divergence theorem. Thank you.